Hi friends, today we have with us Mr. Venkatesh Reddy who has secured an all India rank of 314-314 in this year UPSC Civil Services Examination. So let us have a conversation with him and try to find out what are the what is the strategy that he followed for prelims, mains, you know, an interview, and what books he has referred to, and how much time he has spent, all these details. Also, in the last few years, uh, many students have asked me doubts regarding all the three stages of the examination. In those doubts, there are several common doubts. So we would pose those questions to him and try to find the answers which would be useful for the aspirants. So congratulations for your success at civil examination. And how are you feeling? Uh, thank you, Sharad. Uh, it's obviously, it feels very good to be a part of the holy PDF, which we call it. So thank you once again. So it okay. has been a very long journey for me. So there was many ups and many downs. So finally, a result of a rank of 314 at non the level, yeah, definitely it make me, makes me a little happy. Okay, okay. And coming to the prelims examination, how much time do you think, how many months do you think one has to spend on the prelims? For people who are giving the first, first attempt, I would advise at least they should spend uh, two months, but uh, specifically for prelims. And for people who are like, have already given this examination, they should understand their capabilities and because this exam consists of prelims, mains and interview. Some people will have the natural expertise towards prelims. For some, it will be mains. So depending on that, if we are very good at prelims, very confident about it, then you can uh, start 40 days before the examination. Otherwise, if you have any doubts and such as like, uh, if you want to clear in forest services examination, the prelims also, then it's be uh, definitely better to start at least two months prior. Okay. And then generally for the prelims examination, most of the students who write this exam would follow NCRTs for geography, history, spectrum for history, Lakshmi Kant for polity, Shankar for environment. Other than these things, uh, have you have you read any other books or did you read these books or something else? So uh, I also followed the same books, standard books, nothing uh, much different as such. But what I used to do is I used to attempt more and more test papers. So my strategy was simple, like I'll, I'll at least attempt 40 test papers before going to the prelims examination. Uh, reading books is one aspect to it and uh, solving papers is another. Solving papers helps us to tune our thinking to, for the examination. In the, uh, so we, will be, we have to start preparing from the examination point of view. So solving more and more tests helps us. And definitely I have read one more thing. Uh, I could remember that I have solved uh, last 25 years UPSC prelims papers. So there's a book booklet by Ali Hunt. So where the uh, give us subject wise last previous 25 years that helped me a lot. Okay, you told that you have written almost 40 mock tests for the prelims. So after writing the mock tests, do you just leave them or do you again revise them or do something out of it? So yeah, my strategy was pretty much simple. I used to start 40 days before the prelims examination and my target was 40 days, 40 tests. Each day one test. I used to attempt the, uh, the test in the morning. So it will take a, uh, around one, one and a half hour. Then I entire day, four to five hours, I used to spend uh, analyzing the solutions of it. And I used to make note of at least uh, 10 to 15 points for me, which are very much relevant to prelims perspective, I used to make a note of it. So by the end of the 40 tests, I used to have 40 papers of notes with me, which I used to revise at least twice before the examination. Okay. And then regarding the current affairs, what is the approach for the prelims current affairs? Where did you read them from? So if one attempts completely any test series, it might be like 40 tests. So most of the current affairs, which are relevant for the examination will be covered as such. And along with it, I used to go through all the contents of PT365. I used to just see the contents. Uh, I'll just tick out, okay, what are the topics I know? If there are some topics which I haven't gone through or which I haven't seen, I'm seeing for the first time, 
I used to make a note of them separately. I used to read only that. Okay, okay. And then uh, here comes the most, you know, uh, the, the doubt asked by most of the students. How many questions have you attempted for prelims? And how many questions generally do you suggest to attempt in the actual prelims examination? Yes. Uh, in the last two years, the difficulty level of prelims examination has increased. Uh, we can see that in the terms of cutoffs also. So my strategy was very much simple. I used uh, it was I used to attempt 90 to 95 questions. So given the nature of the examination, uh, it's it's uh, I would suggest that one would at one should attempt at least more than 85. And there will be people who have very high accuracy rates who may be attempting only 80 and getting through the examination. But I'm talking on general parlance. Why? Because uh, I would there would be hardly a few uh, students who would be knowing more than 60 questions in the examination with 100% accuracy. That's the nature of the examination. One should accept it. And we will be facing difficulties while eliminating two options. Because uh, other two generally gets eliminated if you're good at your decent level of preparation. The challenge comes when you're eliminating the final two questions, uh, final two options. So if you have seen, uh, if you talk to any topper, anyone, so it's very difficult to, uh, in the prelims examination to pinpoint that this is an answer. So most of us work out different strategies on how to eliminate options. So it's, uh, one can say it is guessing. So, uh, or people can say it's intelligence guessing, but it's rather than guessing or intelligent guessing, it's more of understanding the examiner's uh, viewpoint or mindset and what is required in this examination. Definitely, they are not testing your memory. They are testing your conceptual skills or analytical skills. So, depending on that, if you uh, even if you go through the previous papers, you can understand that. UPSC is trying, even in a cons, uh, question which seems like a memory based question, UPSC is trying to uh, 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 evaluate the analytical skills of the candidate. So depending on that, that skill can be developed only when you solve more and more papers. Okay, okay. And as we have uh, um, asked most of the questions regarding the prelims, coming to the mains, what is the reason that you chose history as your optional? Uh, it was because uh, the interest in the subject. This examination, at least at least for one attempt, it takes two years, one year of preparation and one year of examination. So to uh, to take a subject and read it thoroughly at a, a PG level requires, at least if you have interest, you can continue with su uh, subject for long. So that was as I was interested in history and I used to read about it even when I was uh, not, I haven't started the preparation also. So because of which I have taken it, there are some advantages with respect to history, like it is useful for essay, uh, paper, GS1, paper, GS1 in uh, mains, and also obviously prelims. Uh, at the same time, there are some challenges with respect to history, like for example, vastness of the subject, and there are multiple resources. So generally one gets confused what to follow and what not to. So these were some challenges, but at the end, uh, there were some uh, in one of the prelims in one of the mains in 2017, I got 250 only in history, but I've made slight changes and could get 312. So this subject is, as people say that it's uh, the marking patterns are generally discouraging, but uh, there is a scope for good marks also. For, for example, people are getting 320 plus in history and I myself have got 312. As you said, history is a vast optional but still you're able to score 312. And here the uh, dilemma is there will be a lot of books in the market. Even if the aspirants read some books, still they want to go for some other books for increasing the knowledge. So can you briefly tell uh, the basic books that you followed for your history optional preparation? Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a, here I want to make it clear that uh, there are two differences between history and history for UPSC. So history as a subject for doing uh, graduation and post graduation is different from history of what UPSC requires. So one has to understand that difference before starting the uh, optional itself. So how one, one should do that by going to the previous papers. And just keep in mind that uh, UPSC has put history as an optional 
for the civil service examination, there must be some reason behind it. So you should understand that how as an administrator, history will be helpful to you. Generally, suppose if, uh, and as an IS officer, if I'm going to a, a state of Nagaland, for example, so I'm going to, I'm getting as a DM to a district for it, then I should understand about the history of the land, the people, the culture, the society. So my perspective, it is like to understand people at the end of the day. So to understand people and the society, what all I need to understand. So depending on that, our syllabus, our questions, our uh, papers are set up. If you are able to get that, then your preparation becomes all the more uh, effective and it will be in sync with what UPSC wants. This is one point. And coming to books, uh, I have for history, I have taken coaching at Balian classes in Delhi. So it gives a solid foundation for anyone to start with, but it is not completely enough. So there will be some topics which are not covered. I used to make a, like two, my statue was simple. Every word in the syllabus I'll be writing, I have been having at least 200 words per notes. Every word in the syllabus. Even then there will be some topics where, where it will be difficult because there will be topics where we have to interlink things also. This was one, uh, the second was interlinking of the concepts. The third was I followed self-study histories, map pointing and uh, test series. Uh, in the self-study histories website, you have questions and solutions of all the last 25 years papers. And that helped me a lot to bridge the content difference between my notes and my classes and what UPSC expects one to. And then writing as uh, in mains, writing more and more answers is very important. And uh, I used to regularly write. Uh, I, uh, I have at least two questions, two history questions a day. So that was used to my uh, way of preparation. And in the last 15 to 20 days, I used to write more than at least 10 questions. So that uh, gets like one pushes into that flow of writing 19 questions in the examination. So if you are start reading, uh, writing 10 questions a day, and that will help one to uh, write more and more questions and complete the paper. So that was my strategy. Okay, so your strategy is mostly writing two questions or 10 questions per day, rather than writing the complete mock tests. Yes. Have, you, have you written any complete mock tests for the history optional? It was uh, just before the examination, uh, a week before the examination, I have tried to write paper one and paper two on the same thing. Two mock tests. Otherwise, you mostly relied on writing few questions every day rather really? than the computer test. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then so I used to be uh, like that. Uh, this strategy was because I was uh, working parallelly. And so I had very really little time. So because of which uh, I had to do this like two or three questions a day. And I used to keep time. Like every question, uh, if it's a 10 marker question, I just try to write in six to seven minutes. And if it's a 15 marker, nine minutes. And if it's a 20 marker, 12 minutes. So that used to buy like time voila strategy. So that helps one to in even the examination also. Like if I am, every question I used to look at watch. So I'm starting this question as suppose 10, 15. So if it's 10 marker, I used to complete by 10, 21. So how, uh, in how much ever I know about this topic, I used to write it complete that and go to next question. So it, it generally happened to candidates who are writing mains the first time that some questions we uh, like thinking too much or writing up the perfect answer, we spend more time with. So in examination think that they don't want a perfect answer. You have to write a average or more above average answer to every question in the paper. Okay. And for the working professionals out there, who are, who are trying to prepare for the exam, who gave a few attempts, but who are missing the exam repeatedly. Uh, can you suggest how to manage the time? How much time do you have to spend per week or per day generally for this examination? Yes. Uh, for people who are trying to give, uh, like for the first time, it will be really challenging for them, uh, given the nature of the examination and the huge syllabus they have to cover. I'll come to, because in the first, in my first attempt, I have completely dedicated uh, my entire time to civil service preparation for two years. Then after in my second and third attempts, I was working. So I'll tell you about my the second attempt and third attempt stories. So uh, where I uh, what I used to do was I used to read in the mornings because that was a time one gets when you, when you don't get calls from the office or friends or anyone else. It'll be and 
in the evenings it was really, really difficult because after going to a hectic day of uh, work when you come back home it will be a little tired and your brain will not be functioning with that much efficiency so most of my like i used to get up early in the morning 5 o'clock like that 5 to 10 before you go to office maybe like 5 to 9 4 hours of quality time there and in the night or in the evenings one or two hours which are is possible so it will be like on an average 5 hours a day and the weekends i should spend more time okay okay so i think it will be useful for the people who are going to the jobs now coming to the general studies mains general studies in general studies uh, generally we feel that essay and ethics actually make some difference compared to other papers so what is your strategy or approach towards ethics how will you prepare for the ethics in which books you follow or something like that yes ethics i initially when i was first starting it i read many books uh, but trust me it was not that helpful uh, so then what i did was uh, i took uh, the last years papers from 2013 onwards i have seen the questions uh, how they are asking and the first i took a case uh, studies with a group of friends so we tried to solve those case studies and i have noted all those case studies so what generally what they are asking when what should an approach should be so for case studies i didn't de- do anything more i just try to understand the approach how one should uh, attempt the question for example uh, ashad i think we also discussed case yes. studies once yes. Yes. so whether we should write the values in the case study or how whether we have to analyze the case study or summarize the case study in two or three lines such that so uh, what i came to know at the end was every case requires a different kind of approach so but one should one should be kept in mind one thing is you have to analyze the case study from the perspective of a administrator so don't think that in ethics paper uh, this is maybe this is may, this what i am going to tell is may not be helpful to the first timers but people who have already given the examination will able to understand link with link with it that try to bring in paper 2 in the paper 3 uh, in paper 4 also like for example if you are ending uh, conclusions uh, bring in sustainable development goals or fundamental rights or preamble or just link it with with a larger goal of what as a uh, what are constitution principles are so that kind of approach and when even when you are uh, like for example if you see the 2019 case studies all of them wants you to analyze as a public administration in every case it was like uh, if you are an sp if you are a dm how will you react so so at that approach the paper should be like that otherwise what happens is we just try to uh, read ethics as a philosophy subject that is not going to help much and come uh, and coming to the next part the first 10 markers in ethics paper so what i did was if, like there's a topics like attitude aptitude every uh, for every word i wrote try to write a definition and an example and if there are any personal examples or such it is it, is, it fetches more marks and wherever possible i try to uh, d- uh, draw simple diagrams so this was pretty much my strategy so what i would say in summer if i want to summarize it go through the syllabus take every word google it uh, understand the concept and write a two line uh, definition of it in your own words trust me if you uh, like wrote learn all the bookish uh, definitions of all these words you'll get confused when you go to the examination so, so i think like definitions for ethics the definition for values all these things if you will try to by heart the definitions it won't fetch much so it's better to read them understand them and write them in your own words and write one example for every definition so that was the way and the second thing was if one has time so one can do like if one is going to everyday newspapers if there are some incidents he should try to link it to those definitions of values attitude like that and try to uh, segregate this examples in one evernote or some place uh, and revise more so that in the examination if one has so that he can uh, reflect those examples or mention them wherever one want to for example uh, i did this this uh, there's a famous uh, is officer op choudhury 
in uh, Chhattisgarh. Uh, he was also a presidential awardee. So he, where he was instrumental in convergence approach. So he used different schemes, uh, the funds from different schemes, and used uh, through convergence. He has brought a great change in uh, in Dantewada districts there. So that example I used to bring in wherever, as a civil servant, one has to uh, have values of objectiveness, stewardship, a convergence-based approach. So these ex kind of real life, uh, real life examples should be brought in, like our Jay Prakash Narayan Garu. So his ex example for integrity, if one is writing a, a definition of integrity, you should mention his name. Similarly, uh, if you have uh, any more public life example, Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi is an example which everyone uses uh, for compassion, uh, Lord Buddha, so such kind of examples. Even one is good at with uh, uh, Indian cultural scriptures like Mahabharata, uh, epics like Mahasa Ramayana, then one can bring in those examples also. For uh, in the case of Gita, if Arjuna's concept towards Dharma, you can mention it for duty duty-based ethics. So such kind of examples, try to note it down at one place and uh, revise it often. That will help you in the examination. Okay, okay. And then you said regarding the diagrams, you have drawn some diagrams where are possible. If I ask you overall general studies 1, 2, 3, 4, all 80 questions, how many questions roughly percentage-wise you would have drawn either a diagram or a map or a flowchart, some kind of representation? It would be around for 30% of the questions. Okay, okay. That means so so map, map was the general diagram you used to make wherever possible. Even the history answers, not only geography, but history also used to draw a map possible. Map. Yeah. Okay. In the option, it was very difficult to draw because we and generally in option one, one will have more content to write itself. But okay. in GS papers in history, I used to draw diagrams. Okay. So for so, example, there was a diagram uh, question on Gandhara art in 2019 question. So I try to uh, draw a map and show places where Gandhara art has emerged, okay. like Bamiyan and all. Okay. Overall, for the thousand mocks, general studies one, two, three, four, how many mocks have you attempted? Attempted. Overall, have you left any questions or finished all uh, eighty questions? I have, I have finished all, uh, all all the questions. I have finished all the papers. So I haven't okay. left anything. So you do not have any part of the time management. Uh, yes. I ha uh, my writing speed is, speed is a little slow, so I try to implement points-wise base of uh, writing answers, so that uh, because when you write a paragraph kind of thing, so you need to link sentences. The link sentences are the extra words which takes time. So when you are writing points-wise, that uh, you can cut short link sentences. So that helps to you for better time management. And wherever possible, like uh, flow charts, for example, for food processing industry. If there any question on food processing industry, I you should draw a diagram from farm to the final customer. So that kind of simple, simple diagrams. For me, diagram was not an addition to answer. Diagram was part of the answer itself, which saves my time. Okay, okay. So whatever you have to write in sentences, sometimes if you convert into a diagram, it will you know save some time for you. Okay, okay. Then uh, GS paper 2, generally most students think that it should be written in the paragraph format. But have you followed the point format for GS2 also? General studies 2, the quality part. Yeah, it was a mix of uh, paragraph and point. It was, I would say, mostly I, I try to mention it in points. Okay. So paragraph is a good way of writing, but uh, the challenge is one is right, one should have a good writing speed. The second is uh, one should have a good language, uh, write, uh, linguistic skills, I mean, the ability to write well. And the third was the important points should not get missed in the paragraph. But one should underline them because as an evaluator, he should, uh, he should feel that there's a smooth flow of whatever you are writing. Then only one should attempt more and more paragraph based of writing. If one has all these things, like. Like the, I have seen the previous topper, Tina Darby's answer sheets. She mostly writes in paragraph format. Okay. So, and coming to the essay, coming to the essay, uh, have you practiced more essays or just use the general studies knowledge to write the essay directly in the exam? Uh, see, essay here also it matters like 
an English, there's a difference between English essay and difference between a UPSC essay. What UPSC wants? Try to understand why essay paper has been kept in UPSC. As an administrator, you are, uh, you have to gen, uh, regularly write reports, government reports, make notings on the files. At the same time, uh, if you have, you must have seen, you have T.S. Subramanian Garu's report on education, all these kind of reports. If you see all those reports, so it has written by a civil servant and as if a civil servant, you are expected to do certain kinds of that kind of things. It is for that essay paper has been introduced. So keep in mind, so there's uh, in general, in general English essays, we always write in paragraphs. But in UPSC essay, you can write in para mostly paragraphs, try to write in mostly paragraphs and wherever possible, get in points also, subheadings, diagrams, and whatever one finds in a general report. Go through second administrative reforms committee report. You will have paragraphs, diagrams, points. So keep in mind this and then start. And what should be your approach? Whatever may be the essay topic, one should analyze it in a comprehensive way. By comprehensive may, way, I mean the political aspects, the economic aspects, social aspects, cultural aspects. So multiple aspects of analyzing a topic. So how I used to do it, I should remember the syllabus from GS1 to GS4. So for example, I used to first think about historical aspects. Within the history, if there is something related to ancient, medieval, modern and world history, then cultural part of it, if anything is there, then sociological aspects of it. Within the sociological aspects, one has to understand about uh, education, health related health and uh, society as such. At the same time, marginalized communities like women, elderly, uh, specially able minorities, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Then I, after, after sociological aspect is geographical aspects. It's just like one, how the syllabus flows. Then comes to polity in administration, constitution, then governance, then international relations. Then if coming to economy, then macroeconomic aspects of it, that topic then agriculture, land, land or land reforms. Then you have uh, all the infrastructure related issues. Then you have internal security. Then coming to ethics paper also, the ethical aspects of the question, uh, attitude, aptitude. So just like that, how the syllabus flows. I used to analyze that as a topic in all these things. I used uh, in a three hour paper, you have to write two essays, one and a half hour for each essay. So for the first 15 minutes, I used to analyze the topic from this perspective. I should jot down small, small uh, in points at the last of the answer sheet. And then I should take pretty much one hour for writing an essay. So now you have 15 minutes left. At the end, I used to underline all the subheadings or underline all the important, uh, I used to read the essay once more because there, there might be some spelling mistake or grammatical errors in while you are writing at that speed. So I used to make all those. Then I used to go to next essay. So strictly one and a half hour for each essay. So that was my time manages time is very important in this examination. Most of the people uh, give more time to the first essay, less time to the second one, but try to allocate equal time to the both essays. Because in examination, five to 10 minutes will anyways will vary from uh, depending on uh, the type of the questions and uh, your temperament as such. So, but go to examination, Keeping in mind that I'll give one and a half hour to each essay. That's it. So this was used to my math strategy. And before the examination, I used to write one or two essays. I haven't practiced extensively for essays, uh, writing, a, joining a test series or something as such. But I used to write uh, one or two essays before the examination. Okay. And one more thing was quotes and data in the examination. So generally data, one used to prepare, one generally prepares for GS papers. So only that data, I didn't uh, make any specific data for the essay as such. Uh, but while making the data, just keep in perspective that macro topics like education, health, poverty, women, or uh, big international bodies like UN, WTO, EU. So data, some kind of data about all this from a macro perspective so that you can use them in any kind of essay. Okay. So for example, any question, any essay on Brexit, I write essays on international relations, if there is one. 
So any question on Brexit, one should have an idea about European Union. How many languages are spoken there? What is the GDP of European Union? And what's, uh, what's the GDP of uh, Britain? So what's the link between it? So some data here and there for important uh, uh, current affairs occurrences. So I used to make it and used to same same to in the essay. And the quotes in the essay, make a quotes on education, health, poverty, all the macro topics. It will come in handy. Okay. Then I am asking this question for almost every topper that uh, though you are successful in the examination, if you are given a chance to go back in time, some one year back or 10 months back in time and write the same exam once again, what are you wrote already, go back 10 months and write same exam. Are there any changes that you want to make in your preparation for prelims or mains? Uh, when it comes to prelims, I wanted to just uh, make little changes like in the examination, uh, if the paper is these days, the papers are lengthy. When the papers are lengthy, don't spend too much time on one question. But uh, just if you are able to attempt in the first go, attempt it. Otherwise, leave it and come for the second round. At least one should be making three or four rounds uh, of uh, going to the exam, uh, going to the paper in the examination hall. Be with that mindset. Don't try to spend more time on one one question. It uh, because yeah because of the difficulty level of the paper is, has been increasing. So this is the one change I want to like make it if I, if I'm writing this examination again. And coming to mains, so uh, writing more and more test papers is very uh, important. For example, uh, essay paper, you won't find much time or challenge as such, but in GS papers, it's more. So while in 2019 paper, there was a challenge for me to complete GS1 because it was the first test and uh, there was a, a little bit of inconsistency with respect to time management. But I was able to come back and write paper two, three, and four and complete them with whatever I know in the time, given time, time period. But there was some challenge with respect to the paper one. So what one can do is uh, after just before going to the uh, examination, one hour before or half an hour before, just take any one or two questions and try to write it. So when you enter the examination hall, you'll be in that flow. Okay, that's so a good rather, idea. So rather than first uh, starting the paper and writing it, so these two or three questions, if you write just before the examination, I'll get you that flow of language or speed okay. or whatever it is. So I want to make this change. Okay, okay. Then as you have faced the personality test and you came out successful in the examination, uh, what is your suggestion to the people who are going for the personal test next year? Means what areas they had prepared to be successful in the interview? Uh, coming to personal test, this is this is one thing which not much sources are available in the market. Uh, not not many people to guide you in the right way. That was one of the challenge I also faced. So first, fill in the DAF itself. Generally, what one feels is like what one what one feels is like is just it's not the cv don't think uh, your daf is your cv like if you're com going for an interview for a company you put so many things that i know this i know that and all to impress them with the cv but when it comes to daf you put things what you know very well even for example if some people doesn't have any hobby as such it's okay to not to be, not to have any hobby don't put it some random hobby which looks very uh, elite or trying to get marks off. You, are, you won't get any marks if you put something. You, you'll get marks only when you perform in the interview. So if you don't have a hobby or if you don't play any sport, don't put them. There's no, not at all a problem. They'll try to make, a con just think of interview as a conversation. The people sitting there with experience more than your age, will try to have some conversation with you on the topics you know. So rather than asking you then and there itself what you know, you are asked to fill the DAF. That's it. There's nothing more. So keep in DAF what things we are very comfortable with. Because I have friends who, who have written uh, hobbies like listening to Punjabi songs also. So you can like listen to Telugu songs. So 
and you uh, trust me he got very good marks in the interview so it's because its interview most of the interview 10 to 10 15 minutes was on punjabi songs which singers he uh, listens to and all that so it's not the evaluation of your knowledge skills as such because your knowledge is already tested in films and mains now they just want to analyze the personality of a con candidate by trying to converse with him in the topics the candidate knows very well that's it so yeah okay so i think you have elaborately spoken on the prelims mains interview your strategy i hope this will be helpful for the students who are writing this year or for those who are writing repeatedly but could not see success and thank you for spending time with us and congratulations once again for your success thank you much so much sir